second lesson Galatians chapter 4 verses 28 to 29 now we brethren as Isaac was are the children of promise but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit even so it is now the children of the world hate brotherhood of the cross and star brethren have you heard what is read out unto you many people continue to ask the question why brotherhood is so persecuted the reason is that they are the children of god even your earthly father, if he is carnal, will after some time ask himself why he should hate brotherhood. He will not have an answer for himself, but the answer is that you are a child of God while he is a child of the world. How? No, many people testify and confess to the fact that brother of the cross and star practices the word of God and have love, but that they do not love them. And even if they are at the point of death, they will not become brotherhood. They are aware that on any occasion, Brotherhood members can dance with flexibility and dexterity and that they are handsome and beautiful and have money but in spite of these attributes they are not wanted. Instead of allowing them to perform these acts of benevolence they would prefer to walk out. They even accept defeat when they say that though they have no money they would die in poverty rather than go to brotherhood of the cross and star because of wealth even if they are desperately sick they would rather die and allow their bodies to be eaten up by maggots than accepting brotherhood such people are not responsible for their attitude there is a wide gulf between you and them if you greet them they will warn you not to greet them again and you ask yourself what is happening nothing is happening except that you are a child of the promise but they are earthly you may give them a car and buy a house for him. He will accept these properties but will sell this house again to a carnal person and will use the car to give lifts to only worldly people like himself and will refuse to carry you in the car Although you gave him the car, you are a stranger before him. Only the worldly people are his brother. Some people may ask why such a situation should occur, but you should understand that you are not from the same plane of creation. Do what you may to him, he will still abuse and curse you. He will disgrace you, he will tarnish your reputation and assassinate your character. He will not stop at doing anything to eliminate you. His attitude will surprise others. But you should not be surprised for as the man of the flesh persecuted the man of the spirit, so it is today because all that is written must become manifest you will count yourself lucky if in a family of three 
you all have been elected into this glory but this glory will tremendously be revealed if you are the only brotherhood of the cross and star member and the other two are not there is nothing you do which will be appreciated by them instead they will always condemn you if anything happens and you do not take initiative they will blame you and attribute your action to your witchcraft and if on the other hand you initiate immediate action they will conspire to beat you up and disgrace you without sympathy there is nothing that you do in your family or village or community that people would appreciate you will be astonished at the way and manner they condemn and spite you you need not be astonished because as the slaves persecuted the freeborn the heir so it is in this generation the incomparative state of the child of spirit and that of the flesh brethren if the worldly people steal and fornicate and commit murder no one will find any fault with them but you neither steal nor fornicate and yet they are pointing accusing fingers and alleged that you kill and fornicate if you do not drink they will accuse you of being antisocial and that any person who does not drink is wicked but if you mix up with them and drink kill and fornicate they will not find any fault against you it will be a very unfortunate situation to find yourself among your brothers who are not children of God or friends who are not children of God because this will be tantamount to handing over yourself freely to your enemies to devour if you surrender yourself to them because brotherhood teaches you to love one another it will be like a yam tuba rolling towards a goat they will lick you up till you die because they have neither love nor mercy it is that vice that when eating with the people of the world you should use a long spoon observe the relationship between a chicken and a hawk when do you think these two creatures will ever reconcile tell me how one can reconcile a rat with a cat so it is with the freeborn till doomsday there will be no good relationship between the two the children of god do not love the worldly people because worldly people do not know god they take drugs they indulge in concoctions they behave unseemingly and so they cannot remain with the children of god the children of the world on the other hand cannot live together with the children of god because they do not steal nor fornicate nor indulge in concoctions this therefore explains why the children of god are not compatible with the children of the world till the world ends the world the people will not refrain from concoction from consulting oracles from killing nor can they refrain from any of the vices if you try to persuade them to refrain from these vices they will fight with you conversely the children of god do not steal nor kill 
nor indulge in concoctions and charms. They do not tell lies and do not commit any of the vices. This is what is annoying the worldly people. Is that not the cause of your friction with your family members? A tug of war between God's children and the children of the world. Brethren, as soon as you visit them, they will complain that you are going there to prevent them from consulting oracles or sorcerers or necromancers. Nevertheless, they will still indulge in these acts because their forefathers followed after that tradition and they claim that God is not against any person. To them, consulting oracles is the order of the day. Any teaching that condemns consulting oracles are new and strange teachings. And as for consulting juju, they maintain that they cannot do without it. Now, what is waging war is adherence to the tradition of the land, strict observance of the culture of the place, the revival of traditional customs and usages, for they believe that God established and hallowed the tradition. This is why your relations always urge you to give them wine to pour libation, to bury your grandmother in the traditional way. The position, therefore, is that while you advise them not to drink, they will persuade you to drink. While you tell them not to indulge in charm, they advise you to consult oracles and indulge in concussions for your protection. There is a tug of war between the children of God and the children of the world. The two groups can never agree. They call you evil and you call them evil. There ensue warfare between the two of you as you drag them and they also drag you about. That is why the scriptures say that the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. For the avoidance of such a situation, the Father has chosen to gather all the children of God together. Ours is a very lucky generation because our fathers and forefathers had desire to see this day but could not see it. We who have seen this glory should count ourselves very lucky that at this fullness of time God has chosen to collect all his children together. If you should for any reason decide to return to the world, only then would you realize your relative position. All the length of time you were in the world struggling and fighting with yourself for a certain purpose, to what extent did you realize that purpose? Do you not understand that it is through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that we are redeemed? Read the golden text again. Golden text, Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. The heirs to this kingdom are administrators. Brethren, have you heard what is read out unto you? 
you will realize that you are here, the children of promise. Heaven and earth belong to God and the fullness thereof. And what belongs to God belongs to his children. Who have you to look after all the creations of God? You only, not only human beings, but also trees in the forest, animals in the field, birds in the air, fishes in the sea, and creeping things to arrange everything in its ship shape order to tend to the flock of God and to put right what was wrong. The people of the flesh are also the children of God. He keeps them in a lowly state. He created fishes, birds, animals, trees, insects, and all creeping things which the hares have to look after to tend them and nurture them. You should, not discriminate, you should not discriminate against any creation of God. For as the four legs of a goat are, so are the hind legs. Do not segregate. Do not abandon them, but administer unto them accordingly. The prayer of the children of the flesh cannot fetch them anything. Their power is of no avail. They cannot receive anything from God direct. They must pass through you, the intermediaries. This explains why you should minister unto them, take care of them, and do good to them. That is why they have the feeling that you have strange power. It is true that there is no other power except the power of God, but you are a child of God, a child of promise. They say your behaviors are curious and that whatever you want to do, you first of all knock your head on the ground. For this reason they conclude that you are worshipping the true God and so they take offense. Others complain that when brotherhood member prays, the dead is raised, the blind sees, the deaf hears, and the sick is healed. But when another person prays, it is of no effect. This is so because you are the children of God, the seed of promise, and they are bastards. They also question why charms have no effect on you? Why should you be affected by charm when you are the owner of the land and everything is under your feet? Everything is under your feet. The sand of the earth, the wind, the angels are under your feet. They fear and honor you. The children of God are known by the sun, the wind, the water, the angels. You therefore have no problem. Is there any wisdom in thinking that brotherhood of the cross and star children should be poor and wretched when it is known that they are the children of God and heaven and earth belong to them? And heaven and earth belong to whom? They belong to the Father, our Father, your Father, the Father of all human beings. And what belongs to the Father also belongs to his children. Your obligation as an heir to the throne of glory, brethren. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. To be adhered to the throne 
or administration of an, es of an estate, it is not an easy thing which can be dismissed with a wave of the hand. It is your duty as the heirs to look after the entire world and its inhabitants. See to the oppressed, to the sick and to the weak, the unfortunate and the wicked. Go to the Jew, Jew doctors, the necromancers and the evil ones, wherever they are, and minister grace unto them. That is your duty. You have to go about administering to human beings and other creations of God. If there are sons which are not in their proper places, you are to place them appropriately. Trees which are crooked, trees which are crooked, you straighten them. Men who go astray, you correct them causing them to know God and walk on the path of rectitude. In doing this, you should neither quarrel nor fight, nor beat up anybody, nor destroy anything, neither abuse nor curse nor discriminate against anything. You have to interact with them according, cordially. You have to interact with them cordially you should not segregate against any church denomination or prayer houses. You should not cause differentiation between all classes of men who come under your own administration, whether they are lawyers or carpenters, whether they are rich or poor, native doctors or pious persons, whoever they are. You have to treat them alike, irrespective of their status in life. You are to meet them wherever they are and give them prayers, give them peace, give them wisdom, give them the word of God, give them blessings of God, and make them to see this light because they are also the children of the Father. The only difference between you and them is that you are lucky children, being the children of promise. You therefore have the responsibility of ministering unto them all. Let your light shine among men, brethren, since you are all born with him. You are the light of the world. And wherever you enter, such a place is overwhelmed with your illumination and also spread this good news of salvation to them. Though they will call you all sorts of names, such as mermaid, witch, or phantom, you need not be disturbed since you have known your relative position and your relationship with the brethren. You have to show them this glory so that they also may glorify their Father who is in heaven. The only advice you should have for them is that they should stop worshipping idols. They should stop indulging in evil communications in blaspheming the name of God. They should come forward to worship the one true God and serve him so that his glory may continue to manifest. Brethren, it is not my intention to be tedious unto you. One stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. Let those who have ears to hear, hear. May God bless his holy word. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.